Hey, hey, it's Maddie K. And today I want to do my own take on the whole trend of discussing tropes in media that we enjoy. So instead of tropes in media, I think I'm just going to talk about things I like in general and want to see more of in media and shows. Uh, first up, one thing that I absolutely love is when there is a diverse cast of characters, like a bunch of characters from different like races, backgrounds, like orientation, sexualities, all of that. Just a cast where all the characters are very different from each other and like it's so interesting because like I feel like a cast where there's like a lot of characters that are like very similar gets really boring. So like a ca- cast where like everything is you know where everyone's different is really fun. Um, second up I really like seeing disability rep. I feel like there's not enough of it in media and it's really cool to see. It's also really cool to just maybe see life from a perspective. I I mean, I think this goes with disability too, but like seeing like different perspectives and different types of lives that people lead. It's honestly crazy, like crazy and really cool to me that there's like so many different, like we all live on the, in the same world, but all of our lives are so like incredibly different from each other's. Uh, Branching out from that, I'd say neurodivergent rep. I, you know, I'm just going to point it out right here now that like when I talk about all this, I mean like, stuff that's like really like like good representation like well researched well well done well written so um but yeah uh neurodiversion representation is off is really cool especially in children's media because i feel like one reason a lot of neurodivergent children probably get bullied is just because other kids don't get it because because they're because these kids are different and other kids what I'm saying is I feel like if it were shown more in TV, like, these different types of things, then they wouldn't be so weird to kids who haven't experienced them. And then, and then first off, you know, people could see themselves in these characters, and then other people can realize, oh, hey, maybe this person's not so weird, or whatever. Or maybe it, like, normalizes it, basically. Uh, on that topic, I also really like adopted characters. Um, as someone who is adopt who was adopted, it's honestly just I I love it I love it it doesn't even have to change much in the story you can just make a character adopted and it doesn't even have to be a big deal I love it when it's not a big deal when the characters just it's just you know you you, it's just there they're they're adopted that's that's it and there's no big like no sad backstory attached to it or anything that's just it's just I mean they there can be but like I'm but like there's no big like commotion around it it's just they they're there they're happy with their family and everything is everything is great you you had a character that is adopted and i get so excited um on that note i also think that more talk about foster care and fiction would be and like programs like that would be really cool because i almost never see any of that though i used to like reading books about about it as a kid and i don't know i just feel like it'd be kind of cool um, moving on from, like, just spe- very broad things, specifically, some other things I kind of like in fiction and stuff is, like, when a story shows certain positive traits that society values, and how those traits can also be, like, very detrimental, like, this especially applies to, like, kind and empathetic characters who, like, or, like, people who are quiet and, like, you know, really... You know, like, things that society sees as, like, really good, but mostly just because you're, like, you know, people not talking about their feelings or asking for help is usually actually seen as a good thing when it really isn't. And I kind of like when media depicts this and also shows how it's not good, how, like, people putting them others before themselves can also be harmful to that person. Um... Talking, getting more into tropes, I really like the bubbly, ganky girl trope especially for some reason I love it when there's like one in like a darker show sometimes like it's just like I don't know or even not in a darker show I just like seeing them anywhere like just we're talking the Yui Hirasawa type the the really the the bubbly like nothing can bring them down kind of character who can just somehow I mean they sometimes they're depicted as like annoying but for the most part they can be friends with a lot of different people um, I 
also really like feminine characters who are extreme, who are powerful and but still extremely girly. Like they're strong, but they didn't have to abandon their femininity to become strong. I kind of hate the the whole like only tomboys are strong trope that I felt like I saw a lot growing up. Like, but so basically, I just really like it when like extremely girly characters are powerful and they're not strong in spite of their girliness. They're just strong. It's not because of, it's not in spite of, it's just, they just are. Speaking of which, I also like when there's, like, a couple and, like, a character has, like, some sort of disability or trauma and their partner loves them. And I kind of don't like the phrasing that they love them in spite of it or because of it. They just, it's just there. They're just okay with it. And they love the other character regardless. And that's, like, a really cute trope. Also, just when... The character allows the other character where they don't have to like quote unquote fix the other character especially in terms of trauma i kind of like that when they're just there to support them through their own healing but they're not like they're not in charge of healing that person themselves basically but they're there as support um i god that got kind of really serious um i also really like like goofy cartoon antics we're talking like the looney tunes stuff i like it when there's like a like obviously not in a serious show but i love like shows that like have like nonsense rules to their world building like shows like looney tunes and animaniacs and stuff where like anything can happen expect the unexpected quote tiny tunes basically like just i love how goofy older tv is more more like yeah, older TV, older cartoons, but also there's, like, movies like The Wizard of Oz. Like, I love how goofy and, like, un- Like, obviously, they could still have serious themes, but, like, they were still- They still, like, weren't, like, chained to, like- I feel like there's a lot of media that's, like, very chained to, like, always making sense. Like, and I feel like we- I feel like nonsense is fun. Nonsense is is amazing. We need oh we don't not everything has to be nonsense, but we need a little bit more nonsense shows. Um I also like it when there's like that really kind, cutesy character who appears as if she can do no wrong. But then like someone like upsets her by either like like whether verbally or physically hurting someone the person cares about or just doing something the character doesn't agree with and suddenly she becomes like the most unhinged and threatening person you've ever seen and it's hilarious it's like it's like just that whole 180 of and it's like not like the character's like a jerk or anything they're just nice they're just really protective or something and they're just like nah i don't know like they just get like aggressive and it gets kind of funny sometimes but also really fun um, I also really like, like, male characters when they, like, hide their, like, true emotions behind, like, this smiley, uncaring mask and like, a, in, like, an emotionally damaging situation and, like, in order to protect their weak hearts or whatever. I'm a sucker for that trope. I don't know why. I feel like, in a sense, any trope where it involves, like, a character having a sweeter side but they don't show it often somehow makes the sweeter side more enjoyable to me maybe it's because you don't get to see it all the time when you get to see it all the time it's not as special but then then when it's like a rare thing it's like oh oh my hello i think this just applies to any character in general but like it's more common in male characters just like the whole like qc unhinged thing is more common in females and just works kind of better because it kind of plays into the whole oh, girls are weak philosophy, but then then it pulls it on its head and it's like, no, she's not weak. She's just being nice right now. But she can, she can, she can not be nice if she wants to, kind of thing. It's kind of, it's like funny to me. Um, then there's that whole thing, like when there's like a character who always does things for others and not themselves, like finally starts taking care of themselves and like standing up for themselves if like people aren't okay with them, you know, being themselves and like standing up for themselves i like that kind of trope um i also really like like the really complicated morally gray characters they get really interesting i like representations of different cultures i like representation of mental health um i feel like i also really like it when there's like oh 
another if we're talking tropes a trope i really enjoy unironically is when it's really well done i i will always like a good good well-written tsundere i like not the for for context as far as i'm aware the actual like meaning of a tsundere is like someone who like starts out being like kind of cold and standoffish and like walls put up kind of character to like slowly like warming up to the people around them this kind of goes into where the thing i was talking about earlier like no wonder i like this trope it's it's like when it's done right it's it's done good it's done really good um i guess i also just like like the idea i also like characters where like they're really closed off to like new people but people they're close with they're like really like they're just like completely different i feel like i'm just straight up talking about taiga isaka right now but there's also plenty of other characters like that like kyosoma from fruits basket but yeah i do absolutely love that trope um i think for like story writing in general one of my my favorite types of stories are ones that are like managed to mix comedy and like actual serious storytelling very well a series and i don't know how it does it but like Kodacha is such a good series. Good, the manga. Hot take. I'm not real. I don't really like the writing of the anime because it takes like the original jokey jokiness of it and it pushes it too far. And like when the series talks about serious subjects, I think they put jokes in places where it's like it's just kind of like you shouldn't be putting a joke there that's really insensitive. Like not to be like like someone that's really sensitive. Like I don't. I'm not angry about it. I don't really care. But I prefer the manga because like the manga does it does it much better where like there's more like there's funny moments and i mean there's really funny moments but when it's serious it's serious and i find it crazy how dark the tones in that series can get and then just go back to being funny the next the the, in the next chapter and it or even like a couple minutes later and it never feels like whiplash it somehow just manages to pull it off so well I think it helps that the protagonist is the person she is where she doesn't like to stay on dark topics too long and I feel like she kind of copes with comedy so like she'll she'll like not want to keep thinking about whatever bad thing is happening and she'll just suddenly just start being or like making jokes and being over the top comedic and it's actually and she's it's actually funny but we're also you also have to be somewhat aware that that's just who she is and you're kind of like oh girly no girly no but no i feel like that's like a good example of a series that like can be half comedy half serious and actually pull it off well sleepy princess can do it toilet on hanako kun can do it really well I'm trying to think of some other other series off the top of my head um that like oh so cute it hurts does it it's it's just it's just cool i think to- you could also say toradora Toradora, definitely. I feel like almost most of my favorite series are like series that manage to have like half comedy, half seriousness. Touring at the end of the apocalypse. Mm. Loves it. Love it. Love love how that series does it. Actually, if we're talking for some reason Indigo Park came to mind because there are a lot of comedic scenes and then there's serious scenes and they never I mean, I guess you could count that in there too, but like scenes where like it doesn't where the jokes where the series can go back to being funny but like it doesn't do it in a way that is whiplashy it can be serious and then it can be funny and then and like chill without like actually ruining the like what's good about the series um another type of series in general i really like is like the relaxed slice of life k-on kind of series but not many series can actually do it the way I the way and for the things I like K on for. Like I think some there'd be like K on Yotsuba, Flying Witch, but manga specifically. I haven't I've only like watched like half of the first episode of the anime, but I feel like the anime I mean I probably should give it a couple more episodes, but like it kind of feels a lot slower than I mean the manga was always slow, but like it feels slower in the anime. Uh, Yetsuva. She's sweet home, I'd say. But I'm talking like the really chill slice of life. You know, it doesn't need to be serious kind of thing. 
personally, I uh, think if they were to go for another My Little Pony show, like to remake it, I personally, oh, Bluey's another example uh, for talking American shows. Um, but I feel like a My, a, a, if they were going to make another My Little Pony show, I've always thought G3 always had writing flaws, but I, I think going a little more towards the G3 style, but also just like having it be a slice of life kind of show. Having a slice of life, My Little Pony is something I think I've always wanted, like fully just a slice of life, similar to K-On, where there's, yeah, there's continuity. Oh, I think that's the most important part of what, of like the kinds of slice of life I like are just, there has to be some form of continuity going on. There has to be, or there, otherwise, like it's, I don't really, I like when shows have continuity, but it doesn't need to be like a super serious show. Uh, anyway. No, but what I was saying about My Little Pony was just they, I feel like it would definitely benefit maybe from having, like, Friendship was ma- it's Magic is okay. I'm not the biggest fan of it, but I was, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not saying it's bad. It's just some point I lost interest growing up, like, as a kid and went back to G3, even though I would argue that G4 does have better writing. Um... But nah, I feel like I feel like a slice of life, My Little Pony. After after G five, whatever they're doing next, I feel like a slice of life at some point in, in this franchise's career would do really good as long as it was well written. Like just little friend little I mean the beginning of G four I think kinda did it, but like just little and you could easily put in the whole friendship lessons idea. You could totally like mix that into this so seamlessly. You could you could teach kids so much just just by having like a regular slice of life series similar to like Bluey or K on or Yotsuba, where it's just the where a group of friends hanging out. But you'd need to have like a really well written friendship dynamic, which is what, or like just the character dynamics need to be well written in general, which is what makes these kind of series like really work, really really work like really well so like they'd have to have a good written dynamic but like just yeah just a slice of life series where they're just hanging out as long as you really write a good dynamic between the characters and make it entertaining and funny it can be good for all ages i mean the success of yotsuba kaon bluey those are all really successful series you can do it you can you can absolutely do it and make money um where was I going with this? Um, I feel like if for shows that clearly, I say like if a show can't either, you know, manage being serious and funny, I usually also just like shows that just stick to either being serious or stick to being funny. Purely comedic shows that have no continuity. I feel like no continuity kind of shows literally only really work well for comedies. And I love, and I absolutely love over-the-top comedies like Nietzsche Joe, Looney Tunes, obviously, like ones that just d- 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 betray any any logic or sense. But I wouldn't put all these different types of categories of like series into one necessarily. Then again, I do like it when an action series has a lot of slice of life moments in it. Like, where the characters can just bond and chill sometimes. Like, I don't like it when it's go, 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 go. Then again, I if you can't write good character... If the show clearly can't write good character dynamics, then it's just like, no, just keep moving the plot. Don't even pause. But if you... If the characters are interesting and you like their relationships, then I really, really like it when series, like, slow down and just allow the character relationships to, like, grow outside of the conflict. I... I feel like that was one of the only things Seven Deadly Sins did right. It was a pretty crappy anime, but one of the few things that actually they pulled off pretty well was, I think, the just the slice of life moments with the bonds of the characters. We're not talking about the romance in that. I'm, I refuse to acknowledge that it doesn't exist. We're not talking about... We're not talking about the animation. We're not talking about anything else. Yeah, I know. That series is crap. We're not talking about that right now, though. We're just 
going to talk about probably one of the only things it does right, and that's the friendship dynamics and the way that they are able to, like, pause in their adventure in some places and just do silly things and hang out. Literally. That, I think those were, like, just my, when I did watch the show, were my main, like, favorite moments of the show. Everything else was just kind of, oh, hi, you're here too. But anyway. I can't believe I mentioned that show on this channel. I am so, oh my god. It was just the best example I could think of. I can't think of I can't think of a strictly action show that has done that that pulls it off well enough to explain to use as an example why the heck is that the only one that's done it well oh my god anyway um tropes 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 I'm now like going completely off script because I realized I wanted this video to be longer so now I'm just trying to think um because obviously I'd never put seven deadly sins in my scripts. Um, okay. Oh, Digital Circus com has a good like comedy seriousness mix to it too. But I need to think of something else. Um, oh, I love when shows talk about serious topics. Oh, that is one of my favorite things. Favorite things when shows talk about and delve into more serious topics. That's easily uh i'm talking i'm talking stuff like substance abuse and just abuse in general usually these are for more older audience series but i do absolutely love i love reading about these topics i, I find them fascinating the psychology behind it and stuff but i just i just love it when shows delve into serious real life topics not too much though i feel like if you get too much into it it gets kind of just depressing but like exploring these serious topics in fiction is a really cool thing that i like i love it when shows do that um anyway there's my little impromptu barely scripted uh tropes video for y'all um i hope you enjoyed it let me know if you want more i'll try and think of more i have more planned videos i just need to actually sit down and make them um anyway hope you enjoy this video and any others i come out with i hope you i hope you don't mind all the messiness here and i hope you have a nice day yay